Hello and full person, this is Anton, and well, today we're going to discuss something a little bit more unusual, and it's something in regards to our health. And specifically, as the title of this video suggests, we're going to discuss a relatively recent study that makes a very strong suggestion that, basically, our body can absorb a lot of stuff, including a lot of vitamins, simply through the process of breathing. In other words, breathing doesn't just absorb oxygen, which is technically a nutrient too, but a nutrient is central for basic bodily functions, it looks like our noses and our lungs can also absorb a lot of other stuff that our bodies actually need. And so let's discuss these studies and these discoveries in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the obvious. To date, most of the research on breathing, respiratory system, and various health effects in regards to air have been basically focused on pollution, or essentially filtering out bad things in order to improve our health. But intriguingly, the idea of beneficial inhalation, or basically inhaling things we either need or that can make us healthier, has been mostly ignored in the last few decades. And here for, I guess, obvious reasons. In a typical breath, we don't actually find a lot of stuff and a lot of nutrients, with only minuscule quantities present in most of the air around us. Nevertheless, every single culture in the world always valued fresh air as being healthy and as improving one's health. With the question being why and what exactly is it in the air that can actually make us healthier? Well, it turns out there has been quite a lot of research about this, but it's kind of been forgotten. In other words, there is strong evidence that we do absorb a lot of stuff from the air, including important nutrients, which are usually referred to as aeronutrients. And in theory, these aeronutrients can easily serve as a supplement to our diet, providing us with essentials such as iodine, zinc, manganese, and quite a lot of vitamins. But what exactly is this evidence, and how would any of this work? Well, here we have to remember a really important fact. Even though a single breath of air is not going to contain a lot of nutrients, whereas a single mouthful of food is going to contain quite a lot, in comparison to eating, we breathe way more. We actually breathe in approximately 9,000 liters of air every single day, and even if there's just a little bit of stuff in that air, it is going to add up pretty quickly over time. And unlike eating, breathing doesn't actually stop. And so even small concentration in the air adds up really quickly. And though at first it might sound a little bit far-fetched, there's actually been quite a lot of research and quite a lot of evidence about this from various studies in the 50s and in the 60s. For example, here is a really intriguing study from 1964 that discovered something really bizarre when studying male laundry workers. Here, because these workers back then were exposed to a lot of iodine in the air, when tested, turned out to actually have much higher iodine in their blood and in their urine. In essence, suggesting that they basically inhaled this iodine while working in the laundry. And the conclusion here was that iodine can be absorbed from the atmosphere. As you probably know, iodine is quite important for us and is essentially required for various thyroid hormones. Intriguingly, in a much more recent study from 2011, Smith and his team discovered that kids that lived in the seaweed-rich areas, usually somewhere near the coast, also had very highly elevated iodine levels in their urine. And more importantly, were less likely to be iodine deficient than kids living in a city or away from the ocean. And here this was directly correlated with the iodine levels in the atmosphere. Most of this was actually coming from the seaweed that was growing along the coast. And much more importantly, it was independent of their diet. A lot of them were not even eating seaweed, yet still had higher iodine. With this too suggesting that airborne iodine can easily serve as a supplement just as well as the dietary iodine. So iodine in this case is definitely an aeronutrient. Likewise, manganese and zinc seem to also serve a very similar role. They can actually easily enter the brain through various neurons inside the nose that usually produces the sense of smell, and both are also essential nutrients. And manganese in this case is actually kind of tricky, because you do need it, but too much of it can be damaging. As a matter of fact, it is neurotoxic in very large amounts. And intriguingly, back in 2014, this is kind of what was discovered in various welders. Now, you might be familiar with the smell of metal when someone is welding nearby, but basically this smell, especially when working with manganese, basically becomes an aeronutrient as well. And so in welders, who are usually exposed to high levels when they work, quite large harmful levels of manganese 
have been detected in the past, suggesting that for many professions where there might be metals in the air, this has to be considered for health reasons, so here you'd probably want to wear a mask. But even as far back as 1953, researchers were already aware of aerosolized vitamins potentially being beneficial for various deficiencies. In this case, it was the use of B12 vitamin that was used in the aerosolized form in order to treat something known as pernicious anemia. And this can be very important for anyone who follows vegan diet, for anyone who's older, or for people with diabetes. And in this case, because it was actually shown to be a very effective and a very safe technique, in theory, this could be applied to a lot of different vitamins and a lot of different nutrients that someone might be lacking. In other words, a lot of nutrients and vitamins can be actually introduced in the air, for example, in someone's apartment, especially if they're deficient in it. And obviously someone might say, yeah, but why can't they just take some kind of a multivitamin pill or basically just eat it? In some cases, this might not be the perfect answer. And that's because when we breathe something in, or basically when it comes to air absorption, our lungs and even particles inside our nose are extremely efficient at absorbing things, eventually injecting everything into our bodies. And that's because the tiny blood vessels that are usually responsible for basically introducing things into our bodies have a much more direct access through the respiratory system compared to the digestive system. When we eat something, our gut first breaks the substance down into really tiny enzymes and various acids, and all of this then has to be processed by bacteria before it can even enter the bloodstream in order to be metabolized and detoxified by the liver. And when it comes to digestion, our gut is actually specialized at absorbing sugars, starches, and various amino acids, but not so much for things like vitamins or a lot of other nutrients that are also necessary. In comparison, when we breathe something, even during the first few seconds as the air enters our nose, various particles from the air already get absorbed into our blood. For example, both in the nose and inside our lungs, there are these tiny hair-like structures called cilia. Here's actually a picture from the lungs that contain special receptors that easily bind to many different molecules, including, of course, these aeronutrients, in order to then directly absorb them into blood. And here from various studies, researchers know that these cilia can easily bind manganese, zinc, magnesium, iron, amino acids, vitamin C, calcium, and a lot of other stuff. And so a lot of these aeronutrients can easily enter our bodies through these huge networks inside our nose and inside our lungs, and even smaller parts like the olfactory epithelium, the area that detects the smell, with each area basically being specialized at delivering certain nutrients to our bloodstream. And as I mentioned before, the olfactory epithelium, the sense of smell, can actually deliver everything directly to the brain. And much more importantly, these cilia in our lungs can easily absorb very large molecules, much larger than anything that can be absorbed inside our guts. As a matter of fact, in this study, by Patton and Byron, they discovered that inhaling drugs might be a much better way compared to ingesting them. And so basically here we're talking about really large molecules that would be considered to be medicine, which would be basically useless if we swallow them, but would be very useful if they're inhaled. Things like nicotine, for example, and a lot of different anesthetics basically work by being inhaled. And so it should not come as a surprise that a lot of other stuff will work too. And because here we need much lower concentrations and much lower amounts to make this effective, in some sense this might also be the future of the medical field. Instead of swallowing things, we might start breathing them in. But here we obviously reach the level of our ignorance. At this point this is still very very early research, and we don't even know exactly what to qualify as an aeronutrient, or what locations on the planet, for example, might be beneficial to improve our health. So, for example, is the ocean area better than the forest, or is it even better to be somewhere higher up in the mountains? And this type of research is particularly important for locations where air is usually filtered or processed in some way. For example, inside an airplane. Anyone who travels by air quite a lot might be seriously affected by this and may need to track their air nutrients at all times. And so this basically suggests that there's this entirely new medical field that needs to be studied because we don't really understand the effects well enough. And this is obviously super important for anyone living in a city. Because of modern urbanization and because so many of us live in areas with relatively poor air, understanding air nutrients and how they affect our health can dramatically improve life for anyone living in a city. So basically one day, we might have some guidelines 
for how to make cities more livable and healthier through the process of inhalation of air and nutrients. And though we all know about healthy, balanced diet, soon we might also start hearing about healthy, air and nutrient diet. Assuming, of course, the study kicks off some kind of a research that leads to some breakthroughs and some major discoveries. But I guess until then, check out all of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.